Hello friends, as you may have heard, Adobe has made some changes to their uh, standalone Lightroom 6 software and their Creative Cloud program. Uh, I have posted on Facebook a couple of different times surrounding this topic and it seems to be a really hot topic right now because these are very popular pieces of software. So let's talk a little bit about what the changes are then what my viewers have reacted to this news and what they might do about it. And then at the end, I will tell you guys what I'm going to do about it because I also use Lightroom as, um, as a part of my overall editing software process. So number one, the first thing that, that Adobe is doing is they are releasing the last update to Lightroom 6 towards the end of the year, they say. So there will be no more perpetual licenses of Adobe Lightroom. You will only be able to get it on the Creative Cloud platform. Now on that Creative Cloud platform, what they are doing is they have, it appears that they are moving towards a cloud-based storage system only, uh, at least with Lightroom. So for now, you can download Adobe, I have to look at the name every single time, Adobe Lightroom Classic CC. And with that, they are updating that software and they should be updating it for the foreseeable future. You do not need to use cloud storage with it. Or you can update Adobe Lightroom and use cloud storage with it. You have no other options with that one. There's cloud storage only. You can use either 20 gigs or one terabyte of cloud storage. Obviously the cost is different between the two. Um, you know, you can still get your, the Lightroom CC only plan or the photography plan or on up to, you know, still getting more, um, more apps. I have the photography plan, so I have Lightroom and um, Photoshop plus Adobe Spark and, you know, Bridge and such. So here's what people are saying about it. I've taken some notes on the very, very many comments that I got to my posts. Um, there are some different thoughts on uh, I kind of have categorized some of the different thoughts on this, these changes. Um, so with the change to no more perpetual licenses, um, John says, it seems that there will be no more perpetual licenses. Not everyone wants to pay a monthly fee. So, you know, some people like when this whole Adobe CC thing got introduced, some people are saying, this isn't what I want. I don't want another monthly bill. Um, and frankly, I said the same thing. I was like, really, a month, another monthly fee that I have to pay on top of my web hosting and you know, and everything else that I that I pay monthly. Um, but I did make the change, and I do have a Creative Cloud, and I do actually like it. I like the idea of um, of having always the updated version, which I'll get more into my opinion at the end here. But there are some people who are just simply annoyed at there being more changes. Um, it really hasn't been that long that Creative Cloud has been around and all of a sudden there's more changes. Ian says, I think because Lightroom has been bad for quite a while and Adobe should have fixed its many performance issues rather than spinning it off into two baffling new directions. Uh, and then he goes on to say that he wants something faster than Lightroom as well. So, you know, it is tough to keep up with the changes. I, I, I can sympathize with that especially when it isn't your day job. You know, for me it is, it's, this is what I do. So I'm, I'm always on top of the news, but not everyone is. So it is kind of like, what, seriously, another change, what? <laughs> so, oh, and then moving completely the other direction, some people are okay with it. Ron says, I don't see what the big deal is. Lightroom has not changed unless you want it to. You can still use the very same app you have used all along if you don't want the cloud-based version. Why are so many people so upset? 
And then he goes on to say that Adobe fixed the performance issues that he found objectionable, so he's sticking with Lightroom Classic. Um, and then Bruce and Robert basically said the same thing, and then some other people said the same thing as well. But with that, some are worried that this classic version is going to go away. I mean, David says the writing is on the wall. Kevin says, I don't like the idea of storing my images in the cloud. So, you know, some people are just concerned that, look, we, we had this change to subscription, but they said that they were still going to do perpetual licenses. Now we've moved on to the next thing where there's no perpetual licenses. Now they're saying we can still do um, subscriptions without the cloud, but are we going to be moving to where is the next step where there's only cloud-based storage available? And then there's others, probably a lot of us out there who have mixed feelings. And I'm actually going to read all of what Chris wrote because it's really well said. He says, well, that was depressing reading. Like other commenters, looks like I'll be looking for an alternative to Lightroom in due course. I actually don't mind the subscription model for software. If I'm getting regular updates and paying eight pounds per month for Lightroom isn't, given the amount of use I get out of it, bad value for money in my view. But what I absolutely won't do is upload thousands of photos to somebody's cloudy service, possibly in another country that doesn't necessarily adhere to EU data protection standards, especially as the photo library is already pushing four terabytes. I do wish companies would dial back their desire to cloudify everything. Some of us are very happy with our data stored on our own hardware under our control. Um, and I think that a lot of people are, are in agreement with that. But others say times change. Some say, you know, we used to use film. Um, now we don't. Some say um, I used to rent a home phone, pay for a TV subscription, but or I used to rent a home phone and I used to use um, an antenna to watch TV for free, but now he's got a, a TV subscription or a cable subscription, I guess. So this is kind of like, well, we're just moving forward, some people are thinking. Um, others are saying, that's it. I'm making the jump. Oystein says, gonna wave bye-bye to Lightroom. I don't want to rent software on a monthly basis and I have no use for CC. Jack is also going to make a change, but he says he's only going to make a change when Adobe stops supporting his perpetual Lightroom 6 license, because for now that's still being updated. So that making the jump, a lot of people said that. They said, you know, I'm just going to start looking for something else to use because I don't like how... Um, I don't like this change in particular from Adobe, and I don't like how Adobe is making a lot of changes, you know, every few months or every year or whatever. Um, so here's what some other viewers are using. Uh, a couple of them on one, the Nick software. Um, some people are still using Aperture or are using Apple Photos. Um, Matthew says he's still using Aperture even though Apple discontinued it. Um, they don't update it anymore. Steven said that he uses Aperture or Apple Photos for library management and Luminar to edit. Some people um, like Jorgen are using Affinity Pro and Designer for, he says he's been using it for over six months now and he has never had to use Photoshop as an editor anymore. Replacing Lightroom as a catalog manager will be a challenge, but he says he'll manage. And then there's all the freeware. So Michael says, I'm on Linux, but it, um, he doesn't regard himself as a pro, but he uses Darktable as my post-processing app, GIMP for retouching. I use Digicam to actually organize the photos. I then use Inkscape for captioning and page layout. He says, no, you could install this entire setup, including a bootable OS onto a flash drive and it's all free. And then Mark says, he guess, he says, I guess it's time for me to take my raw therapy slash GIMP workflow more seriously. Um, others that people are using are Corel. Brad's using Corel Aftershot Pro 3, PaintShot Pro 3, an older version of ACDC, plus an older version of Adobe Photoshop Elements. Um, he says he's used Lightroom, but he doesn't like it. So... But he says there's lots of choices. ACDC C has been around for some time and it's still the easiest for organizing. 
but he says it's a royal pain to upgrade. Um, Capture One was a popular thing that people said they use. Albert says uh, he has been using Lightroom 6 standalone, but once that goes away, or once they stop updating it, um, he's thinking of going to Lightroom Classic, but he's also looking at Capture One Pro. Captain Ron says he would like to use Capture One Pro, but it's too expensive, <laughs> which you're preaching to the choir. We're all, we're all uh, trying to make do with how much it costs to be a photographer. <laughs> um, and then Capture NXD came up. Capture NXD is Nikon's free software that I actually have been using lately um, more and more. Uh, Tom says, I'm a Nikon person and I use Capture NXD not because of branding, but because it is built around Nikon architecture and features. It serves 90% of my needs and it is updated as the Nikon product line is updated. I do not use Photoshop or Lightroom for several reasons. First, it's based around creating its own database in WBS. It seems like you have to get through their architecture to get to your photos. I also found it hard to learn and I couldn't see myself paying $100 and up to learn how to use rental software. Overton, um, as a response to that, gave it a big thumbs up. And Bert said, same here. Mike also uh, uses Capture NXD, but he tries to get the best possible shot straight out of the camera. That's something that I heard from a few different people. And that's something that I do as well, where you try to get what you really want out of the camera and then maybe use something like Capture NXD or um, Canon's Digital Photo Professional 4 as just to get you that extra step. Um, let's see. Travers uses Premiere Elements 15 and he says it does everything that he needs. McFun is another thing that some people are using. Dale says he uses it. Um, he says, as he, ha he says that he has Luminar Aurora Pro 2018 and Heel CK. They all work nicely together, but he also has Lightroom 6 and Photoshop Elements and On One 2018 as well. And then some people are using Photoshop, um, which is funny. I was surprised that I didn't see Photoshop more um, because when folks do email me asking about photo editing software, Photoshop is always the first thing on their list that they want to know about. But I did not see a lot of people saying that they use it. So Tom does say that he didn't like Lightroom CC, but he really likes Photoshop because it helps him remove power lines and such from his photos. Um, but let me read a part of what he said because he had a really good point. He says, as far as paying the $10 a month, I look at it this way. I buy film by the roll and bulk roll and pay for or process it myself with chemistry I pay for. There is no doubt I have spent far more on film than I ever will with rented software. A 4x5 sheet of Kodak Ektar costs about 3 bucks a pop and then there is developing. Even a 36 exposure roll of Tri-X 35mm costs around 5 or so I think for what you get. Renting software is far less expensive than film. He says, I can only deduce that folks who are cap carping about the software price have never bought film. Um, and I thought that was a really good point because it is a good reminder that we've gotten quite spoiled with digital photography, haven't we? With thinking that we can take so many photos and it's practically free, right? And then we want to be able to process every single one of those. And when it was film, that was not the case at all. <laughs> it was a lot more expensive. Um, but... Paul, incidentally, also posted, he said, still my favorite version of Photoshop, and he posted a picture of some darkroom materials. So, so what I take away from all this is that even if you're annoyed at Adobe right now, never fear, because there are so many options available to you. And another thing that hit me was that a lot of people use numerous pieces of software. Um, me being one of them, which I'll get to in just a second here. Okay, my thoughts. My thoughts are that I initially, like probably most other people, was supremely annoyed. <laughs> I, you know, 
I feel like I haven't been using Lightroom all that long and I feel like Creative Cloud hasn't been available all that long and then all of a sudden now I'm supposed to be moved into using Adobe's cloud storage to be able to use Lightroom. I'm not happy with that. Now, then, you know, shortly thereafter, I calmed down a little bit, realized that Classic is still going to be available, um, that it is going to be updated for the foreseeable future. Fingers crossed. Um, honestly, I do fear just like everyone else that, you know, a year from now it's going to be phased out as well. But here's the thing. I went ahead and I downloaded the classic version and I still haven't downloaded the cloud-based updates, but I think I'm going to, and here's why. From what I understand so far, I would be able to access the photos that get, um, you know, put into the cloud from my computer, any computer, if as long as I've got a web browser, from any device, my phone, my tablet, meaning I can start editing on one device and then go to another device and have the images already there and the edits already there. So here's a prime example. I was out at, on a field trip. I was at Bryce Canyon and Zion National Parks. And I wanted to go through my images as I went along. I was trying to go through and kind of select the images that I maybe was gonna want in the book. Um, I wanted to edit some images on the fly so I could share some, some previews with you all on social media. Um, I did not have this big computer with me. This is what I normally use. This is my 15 inch MacBook Pro. I had a small MacBook Air with me and I had my phone. And so what I did was I had all of my images on the smaller MacBook Air. I was going through them. Um, I did some editing on there and some posting uh, through Wi-Fi at the hotel. And in thinking back, it would have been a lot easier, you know, and, and oh, by the way, once I got home, everything got transferred onto this computer and, um, and basically I ended up going back through everything to select my images, partly because I was making a book, so I went back through and kind of changed my mind about certain images that had happened at the beginning of the trip. But partly because I had moved over to another computer. And I know that there would have been a way for me to transfer over that, you know, my selections within Lightroom or um, the, there may have been options for me to transfer over my selections that I had been using um, in Capture NXD because I pulled them into both, long story. But, but I did, I don't suggest doing that, but I did because I was kind of making a decision on what I wanted to edit in. And I wanted to see how the images looked different in the two different software, um, in the two different pieces of software because I am preparing for a video later this month. Uh, but, so it would, have, it would have been nice. What if I had been able to just pull them into Lightroom, start the editing, start the down selecting process. And then when I got home to this bigger computer, it would have all been there for me. I would have been able to post things um, in, from my phone just when I had data coverage. That actually would be really handy for me. Now, that being said, I don't wanna have to upload all of my images. I don't want to have to upload all of the images that I'm even editing on a certain day. Sometimes I want to, but sometimes I don't because sometimes I will have myself or other people into the studio and they are not photos that I necessarily want to upload to the cloud <laughs> because, you know, some of my photos are, um, for example, I had some photos that were implied nude but they were just, you know, from the shoulders up, 
but I didn't have a shirt on when I was taking the photos because it was just easier for me not to have a shirt on <laughs> because that way you didn't ever see, um, you know, the top of a, a tube top or something. Um, so in some of the photos, the, you know, bits of me that I wouldn't want up in the cloud somewhere, um, you know what I'm saying? I don't want everything uploaded to the cloud. Anyway, moving on. Um, what, I've, what I've kind of landed on is that I am all, I'm already using several pieces of photo editing software. I'm using Photoshop and Lightroom and Nikon Capture NXD and Canon Photo Digital Photo Professional 4 and Snapseed on my phone. Um, plus I have some other mobile apps. I've got VSCO, which I don't use very often. Um, I, I do have Lightroom CC and Photoshop Express. Um, so I'm kind of thinking, you know, why, why, why wouldn't I just bring this new and new and updated version of Lightroom CC into the fold and have it be yet another thing that I use? I already have a whole arsenal of cameras and lenses. I have different brands of cameras. I mean, I just use I use something different for each purpose, and I already do that with my photo editing software. I guess this could actually become a part of the greater um, arsenal that I have of photo editing software. So I guess I'm okay with it for now, as long as I'm still able to use Lightroom Classic. And one more thing that I did want to share with you guys that I noted down here is cloud storage in general. You know, I mentioned I don't want to have to upload all of my images to the cloud, but I do upload um, that is one of my backups is cloud-based storage. It's just that I choose what goes up there. Now, I do have a story of why cloud-based storage is really good. Um, there's a viewer out there that had a house fire and he lost everything. He had backups of his photos, but they were backups at home. So he lost everything. He lost all of his camera equipment. He lost all of his photos and all of his backups. Had he had cloud storage as a backup or as his primary storage, um, he would still have his photos, at least, even if he lost all of his camera equipment. So I guess that's one very sentimental but good reason to, uh, to take a look at cloud-based storage. It does cost more, but it also is good peace of mind. So that's all that I have to say about this. And I want to thank everybody for participating in this discussion because it was awesome. It was awesome to see everybody kind of um, working together and pitching in with each other. There were very few people that were um, kind of rude to anybody else. So yeah, I love you guys. I love this community that, that has developed. So that's it, everybody. Thank you for watching all the way to the end of this long video. And I will talk to you all later this week.